feed your skills. Hello everyone, welcome to our another brand new episode, webinar number 671, sponsored by Institute of Global Professionals. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our Institution of Global Professionals International Food Web. Thank you so much for joining with us in this session. And I would like to request everyone, please share this live program in your timeline and tag, mention your friends in our comments. So dear participants, I'm your host for this session, myself, Master Nisha, and I'm so thank you once again for joining with us in this marvelous moment. And I hope that we will learn a lot from this session today. Yes. So don't miss it and give a chance to your family, person and your colleagues to attend this program. So for that, you have to mention them and share this live session in your news feed. Facebook groups, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and all the social media you are using. Yes. So I'm sure that you will have many takeaways and payoffs from this webinar. So don't forget to give our react or thumbs up to our live program. And also you can mention at least your five friends in our comment box. Yes. Thank you so much again, everyone. So already our participants joined with us and they have already commented in our comments. So I really thank you all of you for joining with us. So I'm going to read all the names of our participants. So we have right now Sergio Bernasor, Sir Alexander Alvarez, Ma'am Gina Lindiller, Ma'am Evelyn Perry, Ma'am Charlene Nogichi, Ma'am, okay, we have Sir Arjun and Karna. We have Ma'am Shara Jane, Ma'am Gemma Rivera, Ma'am Rosalia, Ma'am Liz, okay, we have Ma'am Luce Lane, we have Ma'am Molina, Ma'am Jamilin Rivera, okay, we have Ma'am Faya, Angelina. Okay, we have Ma'am Maritress, Maritress, yes, we have Ma'am Pearl Arman, and Ma'am Gloria, okay, we have Ma'am Candace. Thank you so much, thank you so much, Ma'am Jenny, Ma'am Axley. Once again, thank you everyone for joining with us and I'm requesting everyone please share this in your news feed and mention your friends, your colleagues, your family members in the comments. Yes. And really I'm proud to be associated with I, as a member, as a global member in our in IGB's platform. And I feel honored and privileged to host this webinar. I'm very happy to welcome you all to our Institution of Global Professionals International Freedom. And so thank you once again, everyone. Thank you so much. So dear participants, dear learners, dear teachers, let's learn together and grow together. Because we believe that power is gained by sharing knowledge, not holding it. Okay. So I'll, I'm requesting everyone Give a thumbs up to our Facebook official page and our new page that is our kids page is IGP Kids. So don't forget to give a thumbs up or a react in our live program. And also don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to share a little concept about IGP because everyone should know about IGP. It's their rights, am I right? <laughs> so already you have known that Institution of Global Professionals is a non-profit international education and training institute. IGP serves students and community resource. 
IGP, providing holistic social work and education for create a proficient generation. IGP is leading on online skill development institute with thousands of learners worldwide. And yes, we make it get it able to use for every knowledge seeker to originate their personality, more ambitious, and make confident to face any circumstances and develop their own skills. We are entrusted with international recognition. Okay, we organized our webinar, online offline courses, etc. by best and trained speakers from all over the globe to create a vast learning platform for all of you. And IGP thinks it's not effective to increase one's skills just by acquiring formal education. So we provide effective training and consultation to generate profession generation all over the world. And our mission is empower people, enhance, and empower our people. And I'm very glad to share with you that we have completed our 670 member webinar. So today's webinar number is on the end of this year. 671 the topic is dealing with generation gaps okay so dear participants let's start our program with igp's mentor slogan that is feed your skills so you can also comment in our comment box with hashtag video skills hashtag igp okay so let's welcome our honorable speaker from philippines ma'am josephine uh, tarantino Okay, she is a technology and livelihood education teacher in Dolores National High School. Okay, so let's give a round of virtual applause for our honorable speaker. Hello, ma'am. Hello, and thank you so much for the introduction. And thank you for this opportunity to speak again with the Institute of Global Pros Professionals, or the IGT. So again, I will going to introduce my name. Uh, I am Josephine Tolentino, and I'm speaking right here in the municipality of Magalan, province of Pampanga in the Philippines. So before I start, allow me to greet my fellow professionals and our dear audience, a very pleasant day, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I am currently teaching at Dolores National High School and I am handling technology and livelihood education and I am a coordinator, organist, choir trainer of the Association of St. John Mary Vianney in our parish. So today, I am glad to share with you here is the presentation of my topic. Can you see it, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the, my topic is all about dealing with generation gaps. And I will go to discuss what is generation gap is all about. What are the four generations currently in the workplace? What are the characteristics of each as well as the differences between them? What are the strategies and best practices for successful communication and collaboration among different generations? And what are the benefits of a multi-generational workforce? Of course, for our objectives, A, define the four generations currently in the workplace. B, describe the characteristics of each as well as the differences between them. C, implement strategies and best practices for successful communication and collaboration among different generations. D, Articulate benefits of a multi-generational workforce. Let us begin. What do you see in this slide? 
So you can see here, people with different ages, such as young and old, with different clothing that they wear, different hairstyles, and many more. Welcome to our webinar, Dealing with Generation Gaps. So this topic delves into the challenges and benefits of having a multi-generational workplace. It provides specific information regarding each generation and strategies to help ensure effective communication and collaboration across the various generations. But how do we define generation? and the word gap. When you say generation, it is all of the people born and living at about the same time regarded collectively. Example is the baby boomer group. When you say uh, people born at the same time, it means that they have one thing in common with regards to their thoughts, ideas, and their manners. So the word gap it means a break or hole in an object or between two objects. So we have an example here, the average interval time between the birth of parent and the birth of their offspring. So meaning when you say gap, there is a distance, a distance between two objects. So when there is a distance, a social change will take place in it so these are uh, these are the meaning or the meaning of generation and gap so when you put them together a generation gap which refers to the chasm that separates the beliefs and behaviors belonging to members of different generations meaning each generation has represents different when it comes to their thoughts, actions, and tastes exhibited by members of younger generations versus older ones. So it's, you can identify the different, this generation according to what they are um, doing, they, they have on how they re react, how they respond. So that is generation gap. With the definition of this generation gap uh, that we described, do we encounter challenge when dealing with different generations? So we will find out this later. Okay, what are the five generations currently in the workplace? From Thomas Jefferson, it says that every generation needs a revolution. What do we mean by here? Or what does Thomas Jefferson mean here? So every generation has an obligation to renew, reinvent, reestablish, recreate its structures, and redefine its reality for itself. So... In this one, do you know your generations? What generations do you belong? Okay. Now, these are the multiple generations at work. So this webinar is very timely to all of us, teachers, administrators, and everyone, because every day we deal with different generations in, the, in our workplace, of course. But how do we deal? with these uh, different kinds of generations. So there are five generations working side by side in 2021. To start with, so we have the traditionalists. So when uh, born between in 1900s and 1965, you are classified as eh? traditionalists. Uh, by the by the way i will be discussing first the background and then later on the different memorabilia 
and then the events after and after the characteristics of each generation. So, um, this generation have experienced incredible issues. What are these incredible issues? So that time there was Great Depression, the World War I and World War II, and then the time military influenced their way of life. Since war was a great part of, the, of their cultural event and many served during this era. There is also what we call the tough times where scarcity of resources was caused by war and economic troubles. So the country was in a military and social program mode. Therefore, individ individuality was not celebrated, such as birthdays, anniversaries, and many more. So when talking about or the values in terms of family structures and gender roles influence the workplace during the generation uh, there is loyalty and men mostly dominated the workplace uh, and then they had to work hard and see that as the way to live life so that is one background of what we call the traditionalist now, after the traditionalists, if you belong to the boomers, I know there are still boomers in the workplace. Boomers born between 1946 and 1964. These are the product of the post-war efforts to absorb soldiers returning from the battle, returning from home after the battle. And that time, there was this GI Bill of Rights in 1944, which gave soldiers a mean to obtain a home, job, and start a family. Also, the result was a boom in childbirth, where the title Baby Boomer derived. Another Baby Boomer grew up in an era of prosperity and growth in the U.S. They also grew up in suburbs or the residential area, wherein there is less densely populated than the city. Baby Boomers grew up in the year of innocence during the 1950s and saw model lives portrayed on television. And that time television was a large component of the baby boomers since mothers began working outside of the home baby boomers grew up and more and more with televisions as the baby boomers moved to the 1960s their generation was becoming defined the 1960s brought about social changes like civil rights a different kind of war in Vietnam and rebellion against established institution like the hippie revolution. When you say hippie, uh, they created their own communities, listened to psychedelic music, embraced the sexual revolution, and many used prohibited drugs. So, and the last one, this is the generation represent this generation represents a departure from the traditional and movements towards changes in society beliefs and attitudes so that is a small background for the boomer group and then we have the gen x gen x were born between 1965 and 76 they are the generation right after the decline of the baby boom, boomer of the post era. They lived during a time when countries shifted from manufacturing to services or what we call the free agents. And of course, this generation grew up with technology as part of their lives. They experienced computers, video games, cell phones. They have seen the evolution of technology and understand its origin. 
So the Generation X also experienced tough times in 1980s and learned to live in the tough times. Finally, Generation X were raised into two income homes or single parent homes. And this situation forced many Generation X to be placed in the daycare. Their background allowed them to develop new characteristics that went against the baby boomers. So another, another background for Gen X. So we have, we are already mentioned the background for traditionalists, the boomers, and then the Gen X. Another generation, the millennial generation, do you belong in this generation? I think I belong in this generation. The millennial, they were born 1977 to 1997. So we call them as the terrorism generation. Why? Whose defining formative experiences are the 9-11 terrorist bombing, bombings the invasion of Iraq live on televisions due to the start of embedded journalists and hunt for Osama bin Laden. That's why they called, they were uh, named as terrorism generation. They are the social media generation that is comfortable with reality TV and their signature products are tablets, smartphones, and playstations in most developing countries in Africa are called the born freaks. They are much more comfortable with technology with most of them digital entrepreneurs who work with organizations, not for them. They prefer the communication through online, text messaging and social media with friends influencing their discussion than experts okay that is for the millennial next do you belong in the gen 20 i think i already i am i belong in this gen 20 so this group was born between 1979 and 19, uh, 1994 and after 1997 their background Generation group had technology as a normal part of life and do not know what it is to be without a computer, life, a cell phone, or other electronic device, which the older generation had to adapt their lives. So this is very true now. This generation can thrive on electronic communication and prefer that face-to-face -face conversation. So Generation Y prefers using the internet as means of learning and making purchases. They are exposed to vast amounts of information, music, and media, the older generation. Than the older generation, I mean. So this generation was exposed to more group interactions group play groups, team sports, and other activities than previous generations. This was due to the part of their parents' higher education and success. Finally, this generation is used to getting what they want when they want it because the speed of technology coupled with delivery system has made the generation expect things to be done faster and better so these uh, are the background for the five generations working side by side now where generations do you belong so for the next slide i will be showing you the different cultural memorabilia during the uh, traditionalist uh, in the traditionalist uh, generation so we have Mickey Mouse. I know you are familiar with Mickey Mouse, the cartoon character, Cupid Dolls, 
Flash Gordon, Radio, there is Witis, McCarthy Era, and there is also the Life Magazine. So these are the cultural memorabilia uh, in the traditionalist, for the traditionalists, I mean. Now, we also have the famous traditionalists, the celebrities. Are you familiar with John F. Kennedy, Clint Eastwood, Dick Clark, Neil Armstrong, Marilyn Monroe? Although I have uh, watched and seen some of their movies, uh, they are really great when it comes in their professionals, being a traditionalist generation. Another group for the baby boomers, who do you think or what do you think are the memorabilia of these baby boomers? Now we have, of course, that time television has a great part with them. So there is Ed Sullivan Show, Barbie Dolls, Fallout Shelters, and there is also the Poodle Skirts, like this one, the Peace Sign, Laugh In. So this is the cultural memorabilia for baby boomers. Another for the famous baby boomers, see we have Oprah Winfrey, Stevie Wonder, Meryl Streep, Johnny Depp, and then also Bill Gates and many more. For the Gen X, the cultural memorabilia for Gen X, we have Petrox, The Simpsons. Are you familiar with The Simpsons? Evening soaps such as the Dallas and Dynasty. I have watched the soap opera for the in these uh, evening soaps. Cabbage Pot Dolls. And then we have the superhero cartoons on TV, He-Man. And then the famous Gen X, we have um, Tiger Woods, Jennifer Lopez, Tom Cruise, and many more. For the millennials, so we have Harry Potter, there is iPad, iPhone, Friends, Barney, Tickle Me, Elmo, as in the Sesame Street, Google, American Idol, until now, uh, Pokemon. Okay, so these are the cultural memorabilia for millennials. And then for the important events, we don't have the famous celebrities. So as we mentioned a while ago, there was the September 11, 9-11 bombings, the Iraq War and Peacekeeping Mission, Oklahoma City bombing, the clinton Lubinsky scandal, Columbine High School shooting, the Nelson Mandela Freed, Princess Diana's death, and then the Hurricane Katrina. So those are the important events in the millennial generation. Next, for the Gen Y. So you can see here, 24-7 online, there is Facebook, different gadgets. Okay, so these are the memorabilia for Gen Y. And of course, when uh, the Gen Y goes together, this is what happens. Okay. Now, let us go to their color. Let us discuss their characteristics or let me discuss their characteristics. So, you know, traditionalists, they are called the silent generations. So the silent generation is hardworking. Since they brought the strong work ethic of their parents in the factories of industrialized society, since they grew up during lean time or the tough times, including the Great Depression and the World War I, they con uh, during that time, they considered work a privilege and it shows that they considered the wealthiest generation. Do you believe in that? Another traditionalist uh, believe that you earn your own way through hard work. 
also believe in long drooling hours in their prime enable them to get ahead in their legal careers. This is what they believe. Um, this generation believes that promotion and advancement should be result tenure and proven productivity. They distrust flush in the pan success. They want a step-by-step -step process, but they do not want an easily process. They have the willpower. This generation determine, determine or willing to go to the distance, even if they have to dig deep for the strength to do so. That's why during the war, they serve their country being loyal, and then they really did sacrifice uh, what they're um, standing. Traditionalists are loyal employees. So when you say loyal employees, they do not change uh, right easily. They start to, to employees, they have stayed with the same employees throughout the entire working days and lives. They are less likely to change jobs to advance their careers than younger generations, but they expect the same loyalty in return. And they are the kind of waste not, want not, or what we call thrifty. They are not the folks who are going to trade their cars in every few years. They'll diligently maintain what they own to extend the property's lifespan. Of course, for millennials who aren't inclined to dry out a sheet of paper towel for reuse later. So this is how we describe them. Waste not, want not. They, the silent generation can be tech challenge so do not expect this generation employee to be a whiz at operating his new smartphone of all the generations active in today's workplaces traditionalists are the slowest change their work habits and to adapt new and more efficient ways of doing things so they are traditional they value old time morals safety security safety security and consistency the rules of order respect for authority and following directions are all important for the traditionalists okay so let let's go now to the boomers so when you say boomers these are career focus Boomers are career focused and enjoy achieving work. So they are hardworking and they are motivated by incentives. So they tend to work long work weeks. They tend to work to be a workaholic and think that everyone should do the same in order to advance in their careers. They are like doing complicated work that makes a difference enjoy a good challenge and as such as you need to challenge them in order to motivate them just don't make it so difficult that they become frustrated and give up more they have a chance to get real benefit and then of course baby boomers are competitive and they equate their worth by their status and position at work they are competitive, they are clever, resourceful, and strive to win. So baby boomers are resourceful and look for different ways to win. So baby boomers do prefer hierarchical work structure and may find it difficult to work in a flexible time. So boomers believe in hierarchical uh, structure and rankism and may have hard time to adjust to workplace flexibility trends they believe in face to face at the office and may fault younger generations for working remotely 
Finally, baby boomers tend to favor face-to-face -face interaction instead of a remote means like emails and texts because baby boomers are not afraid of confrontation and will not hesitate to challenge established practices. So that is for the baby boomers. Now let us move to the Gen X. Gen X are called what are what we call the latchkey generation, a moniker that gives a nod to their decidedly hands-off upbringing. The end results an undeniably hands-on approach to problem solving around the house. Yes, if you belong to Generation X, then it probably feels it was just like yesterday that you were learning how to plunge a toilet by trial and error, error while your mom was at work. If something breaks down, you can count on the Gen X in your life to bust out the tools and start fixing it faster than you can say, let's just buy a new one. And uh, their sartorial, sartorial style is decidedly, decidedly dressed down. Another, they tech, they are tech savvy, but not tech dependent. What is this? Because this group know life before and after the tech boom, they have an excellent understanding of both digital and analog words, meaning both, and are equally comfortable with both. So Gen Xers prefer to pick up the phone and give you a ring. The highly adaptable Gen X doesn't have any problem keeping up the current technology. They are not just slaves to do it and understand the value of unplugging from time to time. Of course, they are fearly, uh, fear, uh, fiercely independent. We've touched on this already, but if there's one def defining characteristics of generation, it would be their self-reliance. So helicopter parent, loan owner, loan mover parenting, snowplow parenting, none of these over-involved forms of child rearing apply to the Gen X generation. Why? This also means you typically won't find them asking for help until they try their best to tackle any given challenge solo. Gen X is pretty great at getting stuff done all by him or herself. Then, the characteristics of millennials. Millennials are technology technologically savvy and connected. Make sure that your team stay up to date technologically, technologically and with your social media presence. So if you're using an antiquated technologies in your business, millennials need to know that you are moving toward and more updated technologies and forward to having them help contribute to their process of updating. Millennials are transparent. When you say transparent, if you are interviewing at a millennials, you have to look on their social media to find out more about them, what type of person they are and how to help them successful. You should to hire them because of their level of transparency that you are transparent about your position in company interview. Be sure to tell them the good and bad details of the position and company. So the next one, millennials di desire diverse work and collaboration. This, gener this, this generation needs to feel that their job is important and recognition and receive recognition for their performance. During the interview process, let them know the position they are interviewing or applying for is important to the organization and will make a valuable contribution. Another one, millennials desire diverse work collaboration. And the next one, millennials are attracted to position that after a work-life balance, flexibility and career adjustments. For them, millennials like to work hard and play hard. 
opportunity to career advancement for successful formation. For companies, this means that you need to stress importance of work-life balance in your organization throughout the interview process. So for that is for the millennials. And last one, last characteristics is what we call the Gen 20, Gen Y. Diversity is their norms. One of the core characteristics of gen Generation Z is um, racial diversity. For many Gen Z, the backdrop of early years included the country's first president of legalization of gay marriage. They are our first digital natives. So when you say digital natives, uh, the natives use of technology. And of course, many factors contributed to their health, to their mental health challenges. So this means that too much screen time on compound feelings of isolation and lead to underdeveloped social skills. Additional technology is changing the economy, leaving low income. Gen Z value, uh, vulnerable as they enter the work, work place. Um, they are also shrewd consumers. They believe more on what others, especially to the media, what will be the reaction and then what will be the reply. They depend much on the technology. And they are politically progressive, even those on the rights. So how can generation gap cause problem in the workplace? So what is the common um, problem or challenges? First, we have the generation differences. So when you say generation differences, it occurs when one more than one generation interacts with one another. Of course, here comes the generation differences with different ideas, knowledge, and then everyone thinks that they are great and better with one another. And of course, what will happen is that conflict starts and there will come an effect or there will be an effect to the company itself so when you say company company culture heartbeat of your organization because it allows your company to thrive and meets its objective but when generation generation differences is always the cause the problem conflict everything will be sacrificed the hiring of the new um, new members the work will also be sacrificed and of course, another generation differences, which is the primary, primary source of friction. And then because in the workplace, many are millennials, Gen Xers communicate differently from the baby boomers. The baby boomers wherein they prefer to communicate more on the more on face to face. Conversa open conversation while millennials and then this Gen X uh, prefer to communicate through text, emails, and then using by using gadgets. As we say, the key is to bridging the generation gap may be in utilizing those differences. It's important to, important to remember that each generation has been shaped by its own set of political, social, and economic factors. So as a leader, as the president or the, what, uh, the administrator, you need to know the differences and do not focus on only to one um, problem. You have to take in, into consideration the political, social, and economic factors. How do we effectively deal with this generation gap? 
So as a company today, have young and old working alongside. As we say, there are five ways to five ways to approach generation gap in the workplace. So one, focus in similarities. The basic approach is to focus on similarities and not differences between the various generations. Experts say core values are likely to alignment regardless of age gap. And focusing on this create open-mindedness and flexibility within the company culture. Next one, keep communication open. When there is communication, which is the key in bridging workplace age gap. Expert says team building exercise, employ social and techni technical events, and CSR activities are some ways that bring the workforce from different generations together. So encourage mentoring, encourage mentoring, create a strong mentoring platform for all the employees and encouraging cross-generational mentoring to reverse mentoring opportunities should be encouraged. So this is why mentoring enables individuals to meet, gain direction, and also learn from experiences of other individuals. Give value to seniors. Do we give value to them? Of course. Experts say positioning older employees as brand ambassadors of company culture can create help in integrating people into the fabric of company. We need to include them. Set out expectation clearly. Setting clear role expectations will ensure a fully functional enable work environment. Hence, setting clear role expect clear role expectation can benefit the organization at it as it leads sim seamless learning and right role fitment meaning when you have a clear role expect uh, sorry clear role um the all the duties becoming becomes clear and members are not will not get lost okay. so those are the different ways some ways on how to deal with this generation gap now, what are the strategies, the strategies and best practices for successful communication? Uh, since generation, these di different generations have different ways on expressing their communication. Match the media to the recipient. Next, match the media and the message. Use a small talk to facilitate relationship. Another, use feedback wisely. And then be kind. So, of course, when you say match the media to the recipient, the older recipient is more on the formal communication, right? So, written memos versus text and social media may be false for the millennials. Now, for the match, the media, and the message, text for simple items as setting up a meeting. But uh, we have to consider we have to put into consideration that we need to adapt what is the best communication for all of us in the workplace even you are the traditionalist the boomer millennials or whatever generations we need to adapt it we have to follow Why do we need generations in the workplace? First, an aging population and longer working lives are reshaping the labor market. Next, different generations working alongside each other can help transfer skills and experience. And new generations are challenging existing operating models. Why do we need different generations in the workplace? I will leave that to you. And then what are the benefits of working with generation gaps? Do we have uh, benefits? Of course, we gain or you gain a good pers perspective of the cultural, external culture. Second, you can generate more ideas based on varying 
experiences, the older generation can help the younger generation refine their social skills and then create a mentoring environment. So those are the benefits of working with generation gaps. With this one from Charles, uh, Charles Charles, if I were given the opportunity to present a gift to the next generation, it would be the ability for each individual to learn to laugh at, him, at himself. So I would like to thank all of you for attending this program on our discussion about dealing with generation gap. I hope you have learned something from this webinar. And if you want more of the discussion, you can check these references from my slide, which you can access online. Thank you, everyone. And please, if you have some more time, could please help me fill out the evaluation form for this presentation. Our good facilitator here will send the link for the evaluation form. Thank you so much, ma'am, Justine, for sharing your knowledge with our participants. Welcome, ma'am. And we will come back with you in our Q&A session. So, till then, ma'am, please stay with us. Okay. Thank you. So, dear participants, it's time for the quiz. Yes. So, before moving to our quiz segment, let me share about the uh, how do you join in our quiz segment? You can see the uh, joining uh, process in on, on, on our screen. That is www.slido.com. You can directly go to Slido and do the group that is ITP quiz. And we'll share the joining link also in our comment box. Or you can scan the QR code that will be flashed when we start our quiz segment. Yes. So, dear participants, don't forget to tag, share, and mention your friends in your comments. And today, top 10 will be awarded with quiz competition certificates. So, please share these in your timeline so that your friends and your colleagues, also your family and person, can attend the live quiz segment. Okay, so enjoy this short quiz. Yes, ma'am, Luna, the 
code is IGP quiz with capital. So you have to put the quiz code in capital letter that is IGP quiz. And in our quiz session, you can ask your question to our honor of me. And finally, you will share the international webinar code in such location to this yes. So we have right now 26 participants. Why the 
education made clear choices on what is 79% things option number one is correct and 21% things option two is Alright, so let's see the next question. 
Hello. Once again, welcome to our TV session. Uh, welcome, ma'am. We have already a question from Sir Aaron Lehuren. The question is, ma'am Josephine, why are millennials stereotyped as entitled and lazy? So I shared the question on the screen. So why are millennials stereotyped as entitled and lazy? Uh, because uh, we know based on their characteristics that millennials are experience the prosperity. So they have seen their parents prosper from the um, what we call the boomer group wherein their parents are already prospering that time and then to the millennials uh, they are adapting it that's why then they tend to be lazy and of course they are um, uh, they are indulging with the technology they want everything uh, comes with them very fast. That's why we can say they are lazy enough. Sir? Additional teachers, uh, what recommendation I can share with them? So in, in handling this um, kind of situation that, as I have mentioned a while ago, that whether you are traditional, uh, third generation, millennial, or whatever generations, you have to adapt what is on the present you have to move on yes your ideas you have your thoughts you have your experience from before maybe you can uh, to the traditional teachers you can share this to these young folks in the education and for the younger generation they have to listen, of course, to the to these traditional teachers. Actually, we do not call them traditional teachers, but since they are the traditionalists, they are not too old and too, uh, too old. But uh, that is what we name them, traditional. So they have to adapt what is in the system today. Because if you will not going to move on, you will be degraded down uh, backward so to join them you have to study what they are doing uh, what they are adapting to the to their um uh, let's say using the gadgets they have to adapt that because if they will not go to adapt using their gadgets they will be left alone especially now so there are paperwork that need to use gadgets so uh, the communication is more on using the gadgets and then how can these uh, teachers if they do not know how to use this uh, gadget they will be asking asking and asking of their fellow teachers the young teachers especially the new ones but of course, they have to learn and understand in their own ways so that they will not be 
uh, name as traditional teachers. So they will also be a uh, teachers for season. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. So there is no more questions from the participants. Thank you so much, Ma'am Josephine, for coming in our platform and sharing your knowledge about on our this topic. Thank you so much. And we have learned a lot from your presentation. Thank you so much. Welcome, Do you have any message? Do you have any message um, for our Yes, Ma'am. So, in our world today, uh, our situation is uh, do not just stay in one uh, situation. We need to um, we need to move on to then study or adapt what is in our situation because we are teachers. We cannot stop learning, and not only teachers, the businessmen, the industries, so as well as we deal with this. Uh, different kind of generations and by that time that um, no more traditionalists will be left or more on the millennials gen z and then uh, baby boomers will be in a, a number although the voting uh, system more traditionalists are still um doing their Part. So with that, ma'am, thank you very much, and also congratulations to the um, top ten who got the uh, correct answers. Thank you, thank you, IGP, also for this opportunity. And then I would like to say uh, I will be speaking again on August 30. So I will be seeing you, ma'am. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. Have a great day. Thank you, Mark. All right, so now we are moving to our next segment that is certification. So before that, enjoy this short Thanksgiving activity.
is IGP021. Please, not on. That is IGP021. And the disability is not eligible for the certificates. And we could even claim your certificates anytime. You can also visit our website. Our website is www.edu.igp.com. So we see our website and click your e-certificates. And also you can see the upcoming programs in our website. So dear participants, don't forget to give a thumbs up to our new Facebook official Facebook official page for IT for kids. That is IT kids. Yes. So thank you so much once again for your Thank you, everyone. I'm Nasrusha signing up for